while I was doing all these archetypal images, I um, I did I did research on ancient um, um, scripts also. It's a uh, number nine. And uh, actually, when I drew this, uh, it's I got a you know kind of form of a female, uh, you know, simplified form of female, and its head and uh, two breasts here. Where she differs from maybe other artists is that she is not exactly looking at the at the external, so the surface of the body, and she is also trying to free the female body from the from the male gaze, which turns it into. A, a sexual or a sensual object, uh, a mere object of, uh, of desire, um, or something which is uh, which is simply uh, beautiful or pretty from an extremely superficial point of view. Uh, she is trying to go further inside and trying to transcend uh, this limited, constraining uh, understanding of the body and to create uh, another kind of body per which is perhaps there within the body. And that is how she gradually comes to the idea of uh, uh, this new series called the Alter Bodies. Coming to this, transcendence is very clear and you know, there is no hair. And this figure assumes a kind of, a, you know, a, a thematically also like a kind of embodiment of her poems and absolute creative, uh, you know, self which is gender neutral. Another thing I noticed about it is the luminosity. You know, yes. there, there, is, there is a kind of radiance yes. and you know, it's a, it's, a, it's a very luminous kind of figure that gradually, it is as if uh, the woman is, uh, you know, getting transformed into light, into, into a kind of uh, uh, radiance. And uh, that also gives it a very, very special kind of, and as you very well said, you know, here uh, the transcendence of the gender is, uh, is complete. We have uh, nine uh, paintings here, nine heads in a sense, but not exactly pure representations of the human head as it is. 
but it shows uh, uh, the one can say the metamorphosis of the human figure and of the and of the human uh, head because here is uh, a head that is uh, very close to uh, the real one uh, but it its heart is not in its uh, right place biologically uh, and uh, and it all the uh, the eyes are not uh, shown clearly there is a kind of vagueness uh, and, a, and a feeling of uh, uh, a head that is gradually melting and merging in the uh, surroundings and the, the black and uh, red backgrounds uh, make uh, this figure particularly uh, particularly impressive and and th those colors remain here too but the figure undergoes a change and you find uh, you know white uh, mountains appearing uh, in uh, on the body and even uh, even on the head uh, uh, so that it uh, gradually seems to be evolving into something something much more organic and much more natural so in a sense or the, the or the uh, these are metamorphoses uh, of the head uh, where uh, the the, hu uh, the human head uh, uh, seems to become um, a part of nature which also becomes a kind of uh, center of the world where the where the emotion and the intellect and what we generally call the spirit seem to uh, come together and the head is no more uh, what the uh, what the physical or material head is it becomes a kind of uh, transcendental uh, metaphysical uh, kind of uh, head if uh, there can be such a head at all This is, uh, of course, a very, very interesting kind of painting for various reasons, you know. The meditating figure, the colors, the language, uh, heart, eyes, uh, the mountain, you know, several of those symbolic uh, forms that uh, uh, appear in many of her canvases come together here to create, uh, um, you know, a, a figure that she has perhaps never before uh, worked on in this in this fashion and also the the use of the gold makes it uh, you know something very uh, very prominent and uh, uh, suddenly appealing and uh, you know catching the eye uh, catching the attention uh, in a uh, in a minute so many diverging meanings it gives me sometimes it converges into some point for example i thought the red is retreating from her paintings, I thought, no, mm -hmm. see, the, it moves yeah. away. But at the same time, the heart is still, you know, yeah, red yeah. And, yeah. and at the same time, it gives me a kind of calm feeling, but suddenly like, you know, a flash of uh, Chamunda or mm -hmm. the fieriness comes mm -hmm. out of it. Mm -hmm. And then it takes me back to, again, the skeletonness you know, yeah, Karakala yeah. Mayar, yeah, and yeah. It, it gives me a lot of images into my mind. You mentioned about Chamunda, and I never told about Chamunda about this painting to anybody actually. Um, this particular form I got actually from Chamunda. Um, of course, my self in it, and uh, uh, the eyes actually, the eye, you know, the vibrant heart, and the eyes in the heart, and in the eyes. Yeah, yeah. You know, yeah. like it's multiple, mm -hmm. yeah. so, you know, the mm -hmm. that is there. And uh, this, this painting actually took uh, nearly three months to finish. I think the eye in your paintings, you know, often represents a kind of what we call in India Jagrata, a kind of uh, wakefulness. In one sense, a kind of uh, omniscience, uh, looking looking at everything, understanding everything, uh, a kind of vigilance, alertness. Uh, uh, you know, eye always represents that kind of uh, awakening.